In this problem, we have to evaluate the integral epsilon times the electric field from the first component dot the electric field from the second component times a volume component. And then we're going to have to evaluate this integral. In order to do that, we're going to have to find E1 and E2. So I've drawn out the diagram here, and I'm going to use spherical coordinates. So I'm going to use the charge Q1 as the origin. So in this case, this is going to be theta, and then this is going to be our phi. And then I've drawn this vector here, R1, that points from Q1 over to some point that we're going to consider. And then you'll see that this vector R1, so I should put arrows here, R1 is just going to be equal to uh, the variable R, so it's the length of this arm here, times the R vector, so the direction that this arm is pointing to. So this is just something you see in spherical coordinates. So I'm just going to be defining some terms here that, that will be useful later on. So in order to evaluate this, let's try to find what E1, E2 should be. So E1, that's equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon. Q1 divided by R squared multiplied by the unit vector. And in order to make things simpler later on, I'm just going to switch this out for this. So R1. So uh, this arm over here. So um, all I'm doing is just switching it out for the definition so that a unit vector R is just the direction that this is pointing to is equal to R1 divided by the magnitude of R1. And like I've said, because I'm using spherical coordinates, I can just replace the magnitude of R1 with the variable R. So I'm expressing it in this uh, in this in this uh, method. Now for E2, you get something similar, Q2, and then you divide it by the magnitude of Q R2. So I'm going to do something similar. So instead of square, I'm going to write to the power of three, and then instead of a unit vector, I'm going to write the entire vector. So if this is, if this was a unit vector, this would be squared. And uh, in order to evaluate this expression, we're going to ask ourselves, what exactly is R2? What is the magnitude of R2? So, and in order to do that, we can actually use the cosine law. So the magnitude of R, so it should be an arrow. So the magnitude of R2 squared, that's equal to, so I'm just going to call this distance between the two charges L. It's just going to be L squared plus R squared minus 2LR cosine theta. So remind ourselves, R is the length of this arm here. So, uh, so that's that. So this is going to go in here. I'm not going to write that out. So you see that we've we have the electric field, and they come in uh, with a scalar and a vector. And then maybe I should bracket this instead. So there's a scalar and a vector. And here there's this scalar component and a vector component. So when I do the dot product, these scalars are going to multiply together, and then we're going to have these two vectors multiplying together. So in order to find this expression, so let me just write out what we have. So when we do the dot product, these scalars are going to multiply with each other first. So let me just do that first. Q1, Q2 divided by R2 divided by 3. And then R2, 3. I'm just going to do away with the arrow. It's annoying. And then we're going to have the dot product of R1 and R2. So now we need to find what exactly R1 and R2 is. So we already know, in terms of spherical coordinates, R1 is equal to, to just this. So that's uh, this is already known. It's based on the definition of how I've drawn this diagram. So based on this, we can actually find R2 as well. So uh, you can notice that if we start off at this point, if we go in this direction, so it's uh, R1, that is equal to going in this direction and in this direction. So R1 is equal to going in the k direction, L, and then going in the direction of R2. And so you see that R2 is actually equal to R1 minus LK. So now I'm going to try to define everything in Cartesian coordinates. So R1, that's just equal to R times the R unit vector. And that's equal to 
sine theta. So this is just a standard uh, spherical coordinate procedure. Sine theta, sine phi j plus cosine theta k. So R2 is just really similar. Uh, there's only that k component here, so I can just write cosine theta plus r sine theta sine phi. Sorry, there should be a unit vector plus r cosine theta minus l k. So now, uh, now that we've found this, we can do the dot product. So we can evaluate this expression here. So when I do the dot product, the you can just match the terms. So the i terms, they multiply together. The j terms, they multiply together. So we get r squared sine squared theta cosine squared phi plus r squared sine squared sine squared phi. So there's a r cosine theta, r cosine theta, that's r squared cosine theta, cosine squared theta. And there's a negative rl cosine theta. And then to simplify this term, you can see that I can pull out the r squared sine squared theta, and you'll get a sine squared phi plus a cosine squared phi. That's just going to be 1. So we can essentially just ignore this. So we just have an r squared sine squared theta. So plus an r squared cosine squared theta, you see there's a sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. So again, we can, that's just equal to 1. So in the end, we just get an r squared. So this entire expression is r squared minus rl cosine of theta. So we can substitute this right into here. So now we're ready to evaluate our integral. So don't forget our integral looks something like this. So this volume component here, uh, since we're using spherical coordinates, that's just equal to this. Now this is equal to, so let me just pull out the constants, 16 pi squared epsilon squared is it q1, q2, and then it's going to be a triple integral since we're going to integrate across all of space. And we have a 1 over r3 coming from this. So we've considered these, we consider that. And then we need to consider this as well. And then remind ourselves that the magnitude of r2 is equal to this. So uh, notice that we want the power of 3. So if we're doing the power of 3, this will be raised to the power of 3 over 2. So we have r squared plus l squared minus 2rl cosine theta 3 over 2. And then we have this component here, which you found is r squared minus rl cosine theta. And then multiplied by these uh, differentials over here. And of course, the range that r is going to go from 0 to infinity, 0 to pi, 0 to 2 pi. So this draws out all of uh, possible space. So I'm going to simplify this a little bit. q1, q2. And then uh, I'm going to take the liberty to uh, integrate the phi terms first. There are no phi terms here, so I'm just going to make this simpler. So this is just going to go away. There's going to be a 2 pi. And this cancels out with this partially. This becomes 8 pi. So we get 8 pi epsilon. So we've considered all these constants here. And 0 to pi, 0 to infinity. So you see that there's an r square here. So this cancels out, so we get 1r. And then this can cancel out with the r up here as well. So this goes away, this goes away. So in the end, we're left with r minus l cosine theta sine theta d theta d phi divided by r squared minus uh, plus l squared minus 2rl cosine theta 3 over 2. So the next challenge is now is to try to evaluate this integral here. And we're going to do that by using substitution.